Thanks, Andre and uh, Remy. I guess uh, now it's my turn. Um, well, first of all, thanks to the conference organizers um, for inviting me to chair this session and uh, uh, give some uh, comments. Uh, apologies, I don't have any prepared slides because I'm traveling. Um, so, and thanks for the authors. I think both papers, as I mentioned, focus on supervision. They are both extremely clear, well-written, and very good econometrics and both pay a huge amount of attention to identification, uh, basically to try to cleanly identify uh, what's the effect of the two uh, outcomes that they are trying to investigate. And I do commend the authors for paying attention to that because that's crucial in this line of research. Um, so that's uh, very good. One other common uh, observation that I would make to both papers before uh, uh, focusing on each one separately is surprisingly uh, both of them well surprising both of them find temporary effects. Surprisingly, the authors mention that but pass on that very quickly. And I think it would be very important to drill and also put that into perspective. The other broad comment that I would make to both papers is while they pay a lot of attention to identification and, and econometrics. I think they need to pay equally attention to the economics. And what I mean by that is, do the results that they are unveiling really make uh, entirely sense, both in terms of, not just in terms of directional, but in terms of magnitude. And I'll come back to this. I think that's something that, of course, un unfortunately the profession has gone a long way to focus on only on papers that produce results. Papers that don't produce results usually have a very hard time to get published. And uh, sometimes the authors still tend to really make work very hard in finding results. And sometimes I think they forget a little bit and say, well, does this really pass the test? Or are we claiming and attributing too much to these effects? So, so that's my broad comment. So let me go on each one uh, quickly. On the first paper, so the key results there are basically, yes, uh, as a result of these uh, audits, the volume of NPOs and loss provisions uh, increase, and there is a reduction in aggregate lending by the target banks or the banks subject to the audit, and this is mostly coming from what the authors identify, which, by the way, it's, I think it's very neat. It's very hard to identify zombie, and they do a nice job in that. It's an, a new way. And it's mostly coming from that, that it's substituted to non-zombie forms. And then they go on and document that this has a local effect in employment, investment in the local economy. Okay? So broadly speaking, that's what it is. Now, here is my first and probably the biggest comment on this paper, which is related to the point I made earlier, is that, well, these audits are done by five examiners. They usually take about 60 days on average. And... These banks are really small, as Andreas mentioned. My question is, does it really make sense to, or is it credible to believe that five, out, five persons doing work for 30 days or 60 days is going to have that broad array of effects, including investment employment at the local level? Um, I'm somewhat skeptical about that part. So that's my, uh, that's my ma main uh, maybe objection uh, to that paper. Now, more specifically, the authors uh, go and because it's important that, well, the audits are random. And then in some parts of the paper, the authors go very far and claim they are random. In the other ones, they use the quasi-random. The point is that they are not random. They are quasi-random. And that's important because as Andreas mentioned, the banks that are selected are not selected randomly. There is a first stage that identifies the ones that are illegible. Then within the ones that are illegible, then that process seems to be somewhat random. But that's the result of a, that's a two stage. The first stage is not random. So once that first stage is there, you cannot claim random. Condition that could explain the result. So that's uh, an important uh, element uh, here. By the way, on that one, it's something interesting, and I didn't see this, because once a bank is selected, it appears from the description of the paper that the bank is not selected again, at least for seven quarters. Um, I don't know if that's true, but that alone is already introducing some non-randomness. Non 
So again, so the, the, some of these details. One other aspect is, I think it would be interesting, important to be entirely consistent throughout. In some parts of the paper, the authors focus on aggregate bank level analysis. In the other parts, they focus on loan level and firm level. And then in the interpretation of the results, they link the two together, and that sometimes it's a jump. For example, it would be interesting if the investment results, the employment results, are coming strictly from the so-called zombie firms. I don't think they go that far. They are at that point, they are looking at the overall effect of these banks, which again it creates some uncertainty, and maybe that's part of the reason why there are these big effects. Um, one thing that also I, I think I think it would be interesting to discuss in the paper, the authors have this identification where they are looking at a zombie firm that it's borrowing from an audit bank versus non-audit bank. And the result is, well, the audit bank cuts lending and therefore this is going to have an impact on the zombie firm. Well, if the zombie firm has two relationships, if the zombie firm does need the funding, why wouldn't those firms be able to borrow from that second bank? It's not clear if this is public knowledge or there are other effects here. But at the very least, it would be easier for these firms that have a dual or multiple relationships. If one bank is cutting, why not? Maybe they are not borrowing more because they don't need the funding. Just one uh, idea. Um, one thing that caught my attention, the authors have this statement in the paper that they say, one of the effects of the audit is that banks hire more uh, white collar workers and this strengthens internal monitoring efforts. And I couldn't quite understand what's the link there. Uh, there's this statement or this claim in the paper that's this being one of the effects of the auditing. It would be interesting to uh, uh, maybe uh, unpack that a little bit. One last observation that is related to my first point is the external validity. This is this is focusing, leaving all the side issues I raised here, this is focused on a very set of special banks, unique banks, and one has to be careful not to, not that the others do it, they are mute on that, but it would be important to discuss to what extent one believes that there is external validity or this just applies for that universe of the banking system. Well, turning my attention to the first paper, uh, some of the comments are somewhat Similar, some are different. Again, as I mentioned in general, they are um, they focus on identification. My first comment here is, when I think of executive orders, do I think that the first effect or the main effect of an executive order is coming to an impact of lending to minority? I'm not sure. I'm skeptical about that. The authors focus on that, maybe because there is a result there and not elsewhere, but it would be nice to really go a step further rather than just saying, well, it is because we find a result. Conceptually, when banks are or are subject to an executive order, when supervisors put an executive order, it's not clear that it is because they are targeting minority. Now, there is one possibility in describing the mechanisms that the authors discuss, which is the, um, the fair lending laws. The one that comes to my mind would be CRA. But as the others acknowledge later in the paper, none of their executive or orders were driven by CRA violations, which then puzzles me. And of course, they put another mechanism. One in particular was, well, if banks want to look like safer, they substitute uh, unsecured uh, lending for uh, minority mortgage lending. Well, first of all, banks in general don't lend a lot that is unsecured. But even if that's the case, if they wanted to play that game, why then not go mortgage overall? Why to minority? There is, there is some more uh, uh, explanation that needs uh, to be there. One other thing, and this is important, so as a, the authors find that, well, as a result of these executive orders, overall lending declines in absolute terms. And their result on the, on the minority comes from the ratio. It's driven by the ratio of minority lending over total. It could very well be the case that minority is also declining. It's just declining relatively less. And throughout the paper, there is a little bit of, in some places, it's not clear whether they are talking about in relative versus absolute terms. It is a fact that their dependent variable is a ratio. 
and that because the denominator is going down, well, the ratio is going up, it can be because the numerator is going up, or it could be going down at a slower pace. So I think that's very important for the message, and it would be important uh, to clarify. One important, one other point I would make here is that the executive offer orders are not exogenous. They usually emerge after a long process, or at least some process, where there are some deficiencies and the bank some warnings and so forth. Again, that's important. I think that would be important at least to think about to what extent um, that uh, that's, uh, interferes with your interpretation uh, of the results. Uh, one, I have some other minor things, I'd be happy to pass the others. Again, the other point is the issue related to external validity. These are very unique banks. So the, on average, these are banks that have $150 million in assets. For all the purposes, these are small institutions. Leaving aside all the discussions I'm raising here, uh, it would be important, again, to be careful not, again, and I want to be careful about this, not the others do it, but I think it's important to recognize that these pose challenges when it comes to uh, external uh, validity. So that's, uh, in general, uh, my uh, main comments and suggestions, and I have another bunch of nitty gritties out probably past three emails. And, uh, but overall, I think these are important papers, and uh, they are going in the right direction, particularly on the identification. I think that's very important. They are focusing on particular elements of supervision, uh, and it's important not to, I think, two important aspects. One is not to say, well, this answers the overall impact of supervision, it's one component, an important one or two components. And the other one, I think the, the temporary effects and some of these other nitty gritty things that uh, I raise and for the authors to do uh, additional work. But overall, yes, very nice papers, lots of work and uh, nice reading. And I recommend anyone interested in this to uh, do a good read of, of them as well.